It's been quite a week in the world of sports, and we have a major sports weekend in front of us. It's Friday, May 26th. I am senior writer Owen Poindexter, and this is Front Office Sports Today. Let's look back on some of the biggest stories from the past week, plus some news that's come out in the last 24 hours. Starting with Michael Block. He's a golfer who has a club in California, certainly not a name that casual sports fans knew before last week, and probably most golf fans hadn't heard of him except in passing. But then at the PGA Championship, Michael Block was having a surprisingly good run. And then on the 15th hole, Michael Block hit the shot that changed his life. The fairy tale story. He had a hole-in-one, and for a solid minute, he was the only person who didn't seem to know. He didn't see it go in, and he had trouble believing that it actually had. The reason is both that any hole-in-one is incredibly improbable, but this one landed in the hole on the fly. It wasn't a shot that looked like a perfect shot. If it had missed by two inches, he wouldn't have had an easy putt. It would have bounced pretty far away. But it didn't miss. It was a perfect moment that led to much more. For starters, it helped Block finish tied for 15th at one over par, which earned him $288,333. Not too shabby. Since then, he's hired an agent, appeared on a bunch of shows, including Pat McAfee's podcast, and been offered $50,000 for the seven iron he used to make the shot. Speaking of McAfee, Front Office Sports reported earlier this week that he is likely getting the slot currently occupied by Max Kellerman's This Just In, and Kellerman is likely on his way out of ESPN. We also reported that people at ESPN are understandably not thrilled with seeing all these painful layoffs, while McAfee gets a contract worth tens of millions per year. Another story this week was, of course, the A's ongoing quest to move to Las Vegas, which I'll admit I've been following obsessively. A few details have come out since the team and state leaders announced their joint deal on Wednesday. First, the legislation that is supposed to arrive in the Nevada legislature, probably today, will reportedly be site agnostic. The announcement named a specific street corner. Bally's chair, Sue Kim, has detailed which direction the ballpark will be oriented, but the A's are apparently not 100% committed to the Tropicana site, which is managed by Bally's. According to Casey Pratt, who covers the A's for ABC7, the A's toured an alternate site after agreeing to the deal at the Tropicana site. But wherever they build, they want $300 million to make it happen. That ambiguity has not stopped Kim from doing interviews to sell this thing any way he can, which is his job. And he's good at his job. Listen how smoothly he describes a particular aspect of the site. To go to a game, you may end up parking very far away from the stadium. Baseball experiences across the country are ones where people park, you know, quite a bit of ways in distributed parking and walk to the ballpark. You get that sense of anticipation and excitement. I think just as many people will, you know, likely park at an MGM lot as a as our lot. And that's a win for the community. um, And it spreads the traffic around. Back to the announcement. It showed a lot of unity by including quotes from Nevada Governor Joe Lombardo, A's President Dave Cavall, State Treasurer Zach Conine, Assembly Speaker Steve Yeager, and Senate Majority Leader Nicole Canisaro, neither of whom committed to supporting legislation, but both said they were happy to have legislation to look at. And there was also a quote from Clark County. Literally, there is a quote attributed to the entire county. There is some reporting from LV Sports Biz that the Clark County Commission is split on how they feel about coughing up $120 million in bonds, and so they couldn't attribute a quote attribute a quote to a specific person, so they just attributed it to the entire county. Legislation is supposed to show up today, we think. Then we have the weekend, Monday is a holiday, and then the Nevada legislature will have four days to figure this all out. Sticking with MLB stadiums, the league is now using the A's as a cautionary tale on what can happen if you don't keep your stadium in good condition. Specifically, the Milwaukee Brewers are being threatened. The Brewers' American Family Field needs something like $448 million in renovations. Earlier this year, Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers, who is a Democrat, tried to secure $290 million toward that cause, but ran into resistance from the state legislature, which is controlled by Republicans. Sources told Front Office Sports that this situation is not considered anywhere near as severe as the A's, and the team's lease runs through 2030. But take it from someone who lives a short train ride from the A's stadium, you don't want to let this stuff fester too long. You just don't want to leave this stuff to chance. Up next, I attended a media availability with tennis legend and tennis channel analyst Jim Courier. The French Open begins this weekend, and I got to ask him about how the Grand Slam tournament is making structural changes toward the long-term health of the game. We'll have that conversation right after this. (music) 
Here's what's trending now. You can defer payments of a full NetSuite implementation for six months. 33,000 companies have already upgraded to NetSuite, gaining visibility and control over their financials, inventory, HR, e-commerce, and more. Everything they need to reduce manual processes, boost efficiency, build forecasts, and increase productivity. Whether your business generates millions or hundreds of millions of dollars, take advantage of this special financing offer of no payments or interest for six months at netsuite.com slash front office. That's netsuite.com slash front office. Hey, Jim, thanks for taking the time. Um, Roland Garros has increased their prize pool, uh, especially for early round players. What do you think that's going to do for the growth of the game? Well, we, that's been a trend that we've been following on Tennis Channel for, for probably about a decade now, which has been a wonderful trend to see, and it's been led by the top players in the game. I'm talking about players like Federer and Djokovic and Nadal and Venus Williams. Going to bat for uh, the lower-ranked players and saying, when prize money increases come annually, we need to make sure that we're taking care of the players who were losing early in the tournaments. We don't need a check that is $3 million this year to be $3.5 million next year. If it goes up to $3.1 million, which is kind of what the trend line has been, and then first-round prize money goes from $25,000 to $40,000, that's a better use of that money. And we've seen that trend continue uh, really for the last decade. And what that has done is obviously it's increasing the the – security uh, for the players who sometimes have to dip into the minor leagues when you're ranked kind of 70 to 100 in the world. You don't always get access to the top tournaments in men's and women's tennis that have smaller draws. So you might have to play in tournaments that have a total purse of $100,000. And if you win it, you win $18,000, which is a good week. Um, But it's not like playing on tour where a good week will have more zeros behind it. So, that has, has given them more financial security. There's also another sideline to that is that the pension plans for the players, especially in the men's game, I'm more familiar with than the women's, those pension plans are becoming substantial now, which will help these players uh, when they're retired and they're 50 years old and they can gain access to that kind of financial security on an annual basis. And the other out, uh, kind of outshoot of this is that it's, it's adding years to players' lives because now if you're a top 100-ranked player, you're guaranteed to make somewhere in the neighborhood of $500,000 just by being at all the top events, even if you don't have a great year. And it used to be that those players would be making maybe $150,000, and they might look at it and say, hey, I can go be a college tennis coach or a head pro at a club, or I can be a coach for another player and make the same amount of money, and especially if I want to stay home and and get into more of a stable life with a family, not travel as much, I can make as much money as I was doing. So players retired normally around sort of 30 years old. Now we see players having some of the best years of their career in their early 30s and kind of 35 being more of a target for stopping playing. So it's uh, it's increased the lifespan of the lower-ranked players, which has been amazing to see because it's all because the top players said – we don't need it. Let's make sure they get it. Just to follow up on the pension part, uh, I'm actually not familiar with that. How, where is that pension coming from, and how does that work? So every tournament on ATP Tour, <clears throat> some of the prize money is actually held back and put into the pension, and players earn a credit uh, for every year of quote-unquote service, which means being ranked at a certain level. And after a certain amount of years of service, you get a pension that will be prorated based on how many years you achieve that goal of being of service. So if you have five years of service, your pension will be X amount of money uh, when you hit the pension day, which is around 50 years old. If you get 10 years, you're going to have more money. I guess it's going to be X plus Y. If you have 15 years, X plus Y plus Z. So the more years of service, the more money you receive annually from these pensions, and they're starting to add up. And if I could sneak in one more, Roland Garros is the one major that does not uh, use Hawkeye. Do you think that tournament needs to get with the times? Well, I think 2025 will be where the rubber meets the road there because in 2025, the ATP is mandating that all tournaments on every surface use automated lines calls. So um, Hawkeye is is largely in use uh, at most of the tournaments around the world. On clay, there there's a tournament in Madrid recently that used Fox 10 
which is a similar company to Hawkeye, but it uses actual high-res slow-motion cameras as well as the virtual world to get a, get a call. Um, so we'll see which one that the clay court tournaments end up going with because they're all going to have to do it in 2025. Roland Garros is, is not an ATP Tour event. It's the, it's a Grand Slam event, so it makes its own call. So um, they don't have to, but we'll see if, if uh, the players ask them to or if they decide to on their own accord. We'll see. That's it for today. It's not just the French Open this weekend. It's a feast for racing fans as well. We have the Indy 500 and the Monaco Grand Prix. Enjoy the long weekend. It will also be a long weekend for us. We have Monday off. Get outside, have a great weekend. We will see you on Tuesday.